Hey, welcome to the next video. In this video, we're going to try to create a delete button and we can remove items from our database. Let's take a look for a minute at the finished product. So we're going to have a, this red delete me button and if I click it, it will make the item disappear. And so that's our goal for our video today. Right now though, in our current version, we have only the user's data on the screen. So we're gonna have to add a button programmatically. Let's go back into our code where we were creating this um, small list. So inside of here, just after the list is finished, we're going to add a new button. So remember, we're going to just tack on extra HTML code. This is what it looks like. Uh, we have type of button. So I'm gonna put some classes in here that come from the uh, bootstrap. Okay, so there's some code that will create uh, a button. These are two classes that come from the Bootstrap uh, library of CSS. Delete Hero is going to be used by us to create a listener on this button. And then the ID is the actual uh, person ID. So this is the hero's ID. And then there's the text. And so make sure that you get all the quotations and all the single quotes and everything correct before we go on. Okay, I'm gonna take it into the real life and refresh the page and you can see that there's a delete me so it doesn't work yet but we've got at least the button on the screen okay now the next goal is to create a button listener for each of those so I'm going to the section called button listeners and I'm gonna add on to the end here so you'd normally think that we could have a button listener for a class called um, delete hero I think it was so if we have a click command on there Let's do a console log and see if anything happens. So you would assume that if anyone clicks any of those red buttons on the screen, you will get a console log message. Let's save it and try it out. So I refresh the page and I click delete me and there is actually nothing happening. This is really frustrating. Uh, it, you'd think the jQuery quit working or something. There is no messages coming up in the console. So why is that? The reason why is because of the way we created the listener. When we first launched this page, we said, go find everything in the DOM or in the document model that has the class of delete hero. Well, when we first loaded this page, there were no delete buttons. Those were created dynamically with this function later. And so all this HTML code, and then we attached it. That is a change that occurred after the initial loading of the page. And so it kind of misses the point of uh, creating these listeners if those um, listeners are only in, uh, enacted when the beginning of the page is loaded. So what we have to do is change this a bit. We're going to use the uh, we're going to use a different function called on, and on will take a action click and it will listen for anything on on this class here. And we're going to use the class called delete hero, and then call the function. But our, our listener is going to be the document itself. So at the initial load, the document does exist. And so this should do what we want now. Let's save the changes and reload. And now let's see what happens. So delete me. And you can see up here in the corner, it's every time I click the delete buttons, any one of the three, it will actually register a click. So now we're in good shape. Now all we have to do is take that command, delete me, and apply it to the database. So we can delete this console message and now we're gonna actually delete the item from our database. So first of all, let's figure out which hero has been clicked. So hero ID. So I want to get the name of the, uh, the button that was clicked. So first of all, we can just use the keyword this. So any one of these red buttons is a class of delete hero. And so when I get the hero ID from this, that means the button that was clicked. So this active, this current button. And I have an attribute set up on this guy and I'm gonna set it, uh, change the ID. So if we look down, if we look down and we look at the button type, it had a ID of the actual person. So that means that is the uh, person we wanna delete. 
So this hero ID is the person that we want to delete. So now we have to figure out how to delete this from Firebase. Let's go back into our documentation and see what happens here about um, reading data and updating. Here's deleting data. So we have ourselves uh, a remove command. A remove on a reference and that will remove it. How simple is that? So let's go back to our database reference. We're going to say firebase.database and then we're going to have the reference. We're going to find our tree heroes and from there we are going to select our um, hero ID and remove it. So it'll just disappear. Let's go test it out. So I save it and refresh the changes and let's go click on delete me and absolutely nothing happens. I've done something wrong. I've got a typo in my code and nothing is working. So let's first of all double check to see if this is actually being clicked. So I'm going to do a console log and put in the message clicked and then I'm going to say a console and then I want to know if I'm getting the right uh, person. So this ID number, let's console log that and let's uh, see if there's any clues that we can do from here. So let's save the changes and refresh the page and now when I click on Hagrid it does say clicked and it does show Hagrid's ID but there's something strange at the end. There's a little quotation mark there. So it's probably something to do with the HTML code. Let's go back into my long string maker here and this person ID is got a quotation mark but I forgot to put in the quotation mark on the other side. It was supposed to be a single then a double and then a double and a single. So save that, refresh the page, and now when I click on delete me, Hagrid's gone. Harry's gone. Ron is gone. And they are no longer in the database. Let's put another person in. Let's put in Snape. And now when I go back to my database, I see there is a Snape here and let's uh, try to delete that. Let's go back to our code, or let's go back to here. I'm gonna actually put these things side by side. So this one here, let's drag this one out to the side. When I click the delete button, we should see the database automatically update here. So delete me, Snape disappears, and so do the rest of the heroes. However, something weird going on here we've got Snape still listed underneath the users. Why didn't we delete the other Snape? We've got to delete one more thing here. So we only deleted one of the two pieces of data. So this is a, it's a catch that you have to do in our Firebase is that you remember if there are pairs of data being created then when you destroy them you have to get rid of both copies. So I'm going to delete two characters really. I'm going to copy this line, copy once and paste it. Now also we're going to have to put underneath the users a, uh, a user ID. So let's see our user ID was for our current user, right? Current user and UID is the uh, line. And then underneath there is heroes. Let's check that so that's the users, user ID, and then heroes. So I think that's right. Users, user ID, and heroes remove. So let's save that. Let's try it again. Um, so let's refresh the page. We're going to get the new changes and let's put in a new user. Let's try Tonks and let's create a new user. And sure enough, they show up two locations. And now when I click the delete button, both of them turn red and disappear. So it looks like uh, my delete command seems to be working. You can try creating a few people. Let's try, let's go person one and create them. Person two, create them. You can even use the same name, person two, and you will notice that they have a slightly different time. So that way we can see there are different people even though they have the same name. So delete them, delete and delete. Okay, it looks like the delete command is finished. Let's uh, stop the video and let's move on to the next one.